Good morning, especially this beautiful, beautiful morning. What a better place to be than right here. Welcome to the Manahawkin United Methodist Church. We have several, several announcements um, to go through, uh, especially there's a couple of, of good announcements. Happy Father's Day to all those fathers out there. And we also are going to recognize our scholarship recipients this morning. A few other things. If you're a guest or a visitor, please see an usher at the conclusion of the service to receive a welcome package. It will tell you a bit more about our church here. And we hope that you'll come back and see us if there are any visitors. Uh, we will next Sunday go back to two services. We have, of course, we have the one service this morning, and this will be followed by a brunch downstairs in Fellowship Hall. You all are invited, so please join us. Don't run away after church. Please come down and, and have a bite to eat with us. Um, crossword articles, uh, deadline for articles for July, August edition of the crossword is Monday, June 26th. Please send to Joy Cole. Also, Vacation Bible School, Barnyard Roundup, Jesus Gathers Us Together, July 17th through the 21st, from 6 to 8. Uh, see your insert for more information. And food bank items are for June are cereal and shelf stable milk. Are there any more announcements from the congregation? Oh, Mary, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We had our blood drive this past Thursday. It was very well attended. We had, uh, I think it was 49 productive units. And I want to thank my helpers, Levisa and um, Shelly. And, uh, uh, it was a good day. It was very calm. I was very surprised. It ran very smoothly. Everybody who donates, do rapid pass. That gets you through real fast. <laughs> Thank you. Any other? I have an announcement. Um, just a reminder that this coming, woo, almost did a Marilyn Monroe there. <laughs> uh, uh, um, <coughs> Just a reminder to my youth group, um, our church lock-in is Friday night, this Friday night, um, 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Okay, so um, definitely let Miss Audrey or myself know because we need to let the fire department and the police department know how many kids are going to be here in the building in case of a fire. So any of you youth group kids, just can let us know. So we're planning on having a good time. Thank you. Anyone else? At this time, I'd like to invite Eileen and Nathaniel off for the presentation of scholarships. Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And it is a joyful day as we celebrate the academic achievements of two young men. Each will be receiving a scholarship award in the amount of $1,500 from, from the Manahawkin United Methodist Church. That's all of us. This would not be possible without the support of the entire church family, including, but not limited to, the United Women in Faith, the Men's Group, the Youth Group, the Adult Fellowship, Sharon Hood Music Studio, the Eisman Long Family, friends and family of Millie Plant, Kathleen Reese, 
Eleanor Humphreys, and many, many, many anonymous donors. On behalf of the scholarship committee, I thank you, one and all, for your financial contributions and moral support. Also, a huge thank you to our church treasurer, Shelley Sperry, for keeping records of the scholarship fund and making out the check, okay? <laughs> As I announce the names of the Emily Eisman Memorial Scholarship recipients, please make your way to the front of the sanctuary where Nathaniel Eisman, Pastor Choi, and I can greet you. So as your name is called, come on down. Garrett Lee Buck is a graduate of Barnegat High School. He is the great grandson of Norma Paul the grandson of Susan Paul and the son of Jennifer Paul Buck. Garrett will be attending Ocean County College in the fall where he will be studying criminal justice in order to become a law enforcement officer. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Nicholas Yarnovich, come on up. Nicholas is a graduate of Mount Hebron High School and is currently attending Towson University in Maryland. He is the nephew of Jim and Pauline McShay and the son of Maureen McShay Yarnovich. Nicholas is pursuing a degree in theater and education at Towson University and hopes to teach theater one day. And so, congratulations. Hi, I have to look up to you. <laughs> so, we wish you uh, congratulations to both Garrett and Nicholas, and may you both have success in your studies and in your future careers. Emily Eisman's legacy and spirit continues to thrive through these young men, and may God bless you now and forever. If you're able, could you please rise for the call to worship? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 540. May be seated. It's time for children's talk. No, oh, no children. Okay.
We'll go on with a prayer. For our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. We pray to the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured, cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time for joys, concerns, and praises. I can't begin to thank everybody for the scholarship and having Nicholas and Maureen in our sanctuary. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Well, it's a joy to be with everyone here this morning. Again, it's just a beautiful Sunday morning, and what a better place to be than in God's house. Thanks, Lee. As Lee pointed out, it is my personal joy to see you all face to face in God's house Sunday morning. Uh, we do have a couple of um, prayer requests, one from uh, Lee Slater for her sister, Carol. Uh, she's in a community medical center, and um, she has a mass at her lower back undergoing testing tomorrow. So please keep Carol in your prayers. Here's another request from Dorothy Dorner, Pastor Cho and members. Thank you for your prayers, bringing my son Douglas through successful transplant surgery. He had one uh, this past week. He will need continued prayers during the weeks and month ahead to avoid rejection and infection, hopefully toward complete recovery. And thank you so much. So, uh, Dorothy asked us to remember his, her son named Doug uh, in your prayers. Let's bow our heads and pray. We are very grateful, Lord, to be in your presence. It's a plus to be with your children, daughters and sons of God. If we celebrate the Father's Day here on earth, we say happy Father's Day to our Heavenly Father with a grateful heart. Thank you so very much for being such an awesome and good, loving and caring Father of all. So with a grateful heart, we come before you in humility, admiration, and prayer. What shall we bring to your attention, Lord? Yes, we don't even have to say what we are up against because you already know. However, in general, we pray for those folks who need healing, such as Carol, and such as Doug, and some of our members and friends going through recovery, such as Shirley Elliott. We pray that, Lord, you strengthen them, restore and renew their health to full as it's supposed to be. 
also pray for those family members who've been taking care of their aging or aged parents for so long, at times we get tired, we get weary. In those moments, Lord, speak to their hearts saying, you're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. Keep on going. Keep on going. You're doing a great job. Comfort them, Lord. We also lift up our leadership, both nation and global community. They need your help, Lord. They need your wisdom and guidance and direction and courage to do what is right for their people. Once again, Lord, we are very grateful for this congregation where everyone is special and precious in your sight. We pray all these things in your son's precious name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Steve. Time for the scripture reading. I don't know how I can follow that, but our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, when a woman took and hid in three seda of flour until it was all leavened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let me begin my sermon this morning with some catchphrases of cartoon superheroes. I'm sure young folks have no trouble answering these questions. Who said, I can do this all day? Come on, nobody knows? You guys watch movies? Captain America. Oh, yeah, yeah. Truth, justice. Superman. All right. With great power comes great responsibility. Huh? Boy, I'm really surprised this morning. Spider Man. Oh, you knew that, right? Man, it's getting harder. (laughs) Another movie quote. In the movie, he said, you shall not pass. Hmm? No. Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings. Oh man, maybe I'm old, I don't know. (laughs) Well, I'm moving on to a little more famous quotes of the, our presidents, who said, four score and seven years ago. Ooh, yeah, you guys, uh, I'm sure you got A plus in history. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Good for you. The buck stops here. Truman, ooh, ooh. One last one. Let's make America great again. No. Who said it first? Reagan. And would you believe uh, Bill Clinton used the same phrase? And Trump made it. (laughs) No, no. And then Trump made it very popular. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Did you know that our Lord Jesus Christ also had a slogan for his ministry on earth? His his catchphrase was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The slogan gives us a general idea why Jesus came to earth in the first place to proclaim and fulfill God's kingdom on earth to bring God's people back to his father, their father through repentance and forgiveness. He started God's kingdom 2,000 years ago. It's still going on, and it will fully consummate at his second coming. Now, Jesus did three things on earth, teaching, preaching, and healing. He went through all the cities and villages, the Bible says, in Israel, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. Now, as far as his teaching method was concerned, he once said, I quote, how shall we picture the kingdom of God and by what parable shall we present it? As teacher, he thought about, pondered, and he never used, by the way, big theological jargons that were over 
folks' head. Instead, he utilized a simple image or statement or story so that people would remember better and longer. So he taught his lessons on God's kingdom in parables. By the way, some of you never heard of the word parables. What is a parable? It's a story or statement, if you will, where God's truth is hidden. You must dig out and lay off the God's mystery is hidden in the parable. Now, because Jesus told the kingdom mysteries in parables, the crowds often didn't get it. Get it. Neither did Jesus' own disciples. So when they were alone with Jesus, they said, Teacher, please explain to us. We don't understand what you said. And they asked Jesus, Why do you speak to the people, by the way, in parables? Why don't you speak in plain language? And Jesus answered them, To you, my disciples, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. And then he went on explaining the parables in a plain language to his disciples. Now, thank God that all those kingdom parables are now recorded in the Bible. We are truly blessed to have the Bible in plain English. The Bible lists not only all the parables, but also Jesus' explanations of what those parables mean. All we have to do is to get into God's word. Now, this is the sad reality that most of us remain ignorant of God's kingdom mysteries because few of us get into the word of God. So ask yourself, when was the last time I opened God's word and hid it to God's message? When was the last time I said to myself, aha, this is what Jesus meant on God's kingdom? Do not expect God to spoon feed you with his word. God says, I have given everything you need to know in my book. Do your work. I remember reading a book written by a man who has you know, been to heaven in his near-death experience. He came back and he wrote the book. And he said uh, when he was in heaven, he met Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ asked him, have you read my book, meaning the Bible. If Jesus asked you the same question this morning, have you read my book, how would you answer? Folks, when it comes down to God's word, you have to desire and long for his word. No one can and will do it for you. If you do not desire the living word of God, you will not get into the word of God. If you do, uh, do not get into the word of God, you will not get any spiritual insight or benefit from it. Simple as that. Do you want a blessed life before God like I do? And let me tell you how. Spend time in God's word, reading and hearing and meditating on it. And you'll be able to do the will of your heavenly father and bear fruits in your daily lives. Let me say it again. It doesn't matter how many copies of the Bible you have at home. For me, I have at least 40 some copies of the Bible. Does it count? No, unless I open it, read it, and do what I have learned from God's word. Do not bury God's word in the ground in your heart. As you know, this year's theme for our congregation is Thy Kingdom Come. You see the banner here. And as pastor of this congregation, every day I remember all of you and your family in my prayers. I pray for your peace. I pray for your prosperity. I pray for your health. But more than that, I pray for everyone that God's kingdom come and be realized in your hearts, in your families, and in our communities. To some of you, the phrase, God's kingdom come, may still sound foreign and foggy. You may hardly understand what God's kingdom is all about. You may hardly pinpoint what it really means, let alone experiencing God's kingdom in your life. Let me tell you one more time. What is the kingdom of God? If someone asks you, how do you answer it? 
This is my simplest answer. It is the kingdom where God is king, and we are his citizens. God reigns in our hearts with his commandments, and we obey his law. In God's kingdom, we walk in the ways that God commands us. God is enthroned in our hearts and lives. He calls the shots, not you and I, and we obey. That's the kingdom of God, and that's the kingdom of heaven. As I said before, Jesus explained the mysteries of God's kingdom in parables. They are all recorded in the Bible. It is your duty to understand his parables by studying the word of God. It is my responsibility as your pastor to help you to understand the kingdom principles in parables. So for the next two months, throughout the summer, I'm going to preach on Jesus's kingdom parables. Today is the first lesson. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. So what is leaven? It is a substance, isn't it? Especially yeast that is added to dough, flour if you will, before it is cooked to make it rise. We all know that in Jesus' time, leaven, not yeast at the time, was a little piece of dough which had been kept over from previous baking. In the keeping it fermented and leaven was simply a piece of fermented dough. The closest example we have now I'm not really in baking thing, but kind of sourdough bread, isn't it? Not commercially cultivated yeast. Anyway, the story is very simple. There was a woman who takes leaven and mixes it into dough, and eventually the whole of the dough is leavened. So what does it mean? By the way, in the story, the leaven is you and me. The woman is God, and the dough is the world. In this parable of the leaven, we learn three things about God's kingdom and how it advances in the world. Each lesson stems from the nature of yeast. The first one is life. Yeast is a living organism. In it, there's life, the life-transforming life. Only the living yeast is a good yeast. The dead one is no good. Once I tried to bake bread, you're truly... I did everything, put everything, and the problem is that dough was not rising. What's the problem? The yeast was dead, expired. The dead one is no good. The purpose of yeast is to bring transformation to wherever it is put. The transforming power comes from, once again, its life within. Like yeast, we the believers are God's kingdom agents. Before we talk about transformation of the world, you know, Methodist logo is brilliant. The making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Great. But we must have, before we talk about transformation of the world, we must have Christ's life in us. Only Christ's life brings life to the world. If you and I don't have Christ living in us, we have no life of Christ. If we have no Christ life in us, we are no good agents in terms of bringing changes to our surroundings. God sends us to bring life to wherever we go and change lives of people in the world one at a time. Be sure to have Christ's life in you. The second nature is this, is mix. Dough to east is the world to us. Remember the field God is sending us. It is the world, not the church within. Christ's church is never supposed to stay within the church walls. We are sent out to the world. The world is our parish, John Wesley once said. Like the woman places the yeast in the flower, God sends us out into the world. Christ commands us to go out to the world and make them his disciples, remember Great Commission, which says, Christ says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you. Go into the world. You know, Jesus once praying to his Father, he said as this, Father, I have given them, meaning his disciples, your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out of the world, 
but to keep them away from the evil one. They're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them in your truth, your word is truth. Just as you have sent me into the world, I also sent them, where? Into the world. It is not God's will to take us out of the world, no matter how terrible the world is. Rather, it is not either for us to escape from the world. Do not avoid the world, nor run away from the world. You know, Christ knows that he is sending us out into the world like, I quote, sheep among wolves. It's terrible out there, we all agree, yet God still sends us into the world. He still commands us to stay in there and be the changing agent because without us, there will be no transformation of the world. God's kingdom must mingle with the world and change it. Now, let's not forget the born nature of East is what? To change the surroundings where it is put in, not the other way around. Learn from this as aspect of East. God puts us in the world with an intention to change the world surrounding us, not us being changed by the world. Now, listen to God's word in Romans. He says, do not be conformed to this world. Why should we not be conformed to this world? Because the world corrupts us with the lust of the flesh, the cravings of sinful nature, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. We all know what the world does to us. Let's do the some reality check. How are we doing the Christ church, the state of today's church? Lots of churches and too many Christians are conformed to the secular teaching and its practice to the point where we don't see much difference at all between the world and the church. It's time that we reversed this conformity lest we lose our strength to change the world. Number three, grow. Every good living yeast makes the dough grow. If it doesn't, it fails its purpose. Same with God's kingdom. God's kingdom is destined to grow. It must grow, and believers advance God's kingdom on earth. It has been growing, and speaking of God's kingdom growth, history proves it. From a humble start of 120 disciples in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, now the Church of Christ altogether is about one-third of the entire global population. Not long ago, it overpassed 8 billion people. So you do the math. When God's kingdom stops growing, it is time that we examine ourselves, our faith, and our practice, asking, where have we gone wrong? Ask yourself, am I transformed to Christ's image before I go out there to change the world. Remember, number one principle of God's kingdom is your own transformation into Christ's image before you expect to transform others. When we are transformed, then we are ready to bring changes to our family, to our workplace, and communities. Folks, as for closing, I will say this. You and I are the East and the leaven for the world. God sends us into the world, not out of the world, and be the kingdom agent. God says, do not avoid it. Do not run from it. Go into the world, into your family, into your workplace, and into your community. Stay there and love the people around you. Now, here's what you do. Pray for those who persecute you. Be thankful in all circumstances. Forgive your enemies. Do not curse them and bring glory to God in all you do. You know, come to think of it, that's what the early church did, and that's how God's kingdom started growing. They shared with each other of what they had. They started the first soup kitchen in Jerusalem. Did you know? 2,000 years ago, they started. They forgave their enemies, and it is time that we did the same. We are the kingdom agents you are the kingdom agent. Do your thing in the world. Christ goes with you. Let's bow as and pray.
Sometimes, Lord, we forget who we are. Before anybody tells us who we are, we know what you tell us. You have chosen us to be your children. Our Father in heaven loves us. He has a mission for each child of his. That is, be the light, be the salt, and be the leaven in the world. Of course, when we look at ourselves, who am I? I'm nobody. But when Christ is with us, the life-changing, transforming life in us, and that affects our surroundings, and that's where the transformation of the world begins. Send us, Lord, into the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Let us all arise and sing our middle hymn, verses 4 and 5. Please be seated. It's time for the offering. Ushers, please come forward. Please remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, 572, if you are able.
you spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on what a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are bloody the birds begin to sing the It's fresh like spring, you want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him, it matters not where you are bound. After my benediction, I'll say the prayer grace for the meal as well, so that when you go to the fellowship hall, you can start right away. Let's bow us and pray. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. We also, Lord, humbly ask you to bless our of fellowship and the food that we are about to take and the hands and hearts that prepared our meal. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.